How's it going guys? I'm Robert from Machado Visuals and NAB is one of my favorite weeks of the year because not only do I get to find a bunch of new onset solutions, but I also get to meet up with fellow creators and work on fun, creative projects with some of the latest tech. This year at the show, one of my main goals was finding solutions for an upcoming season of that cooking show that I'm usually on and of course to poke around and see what's new. So here's what I found. I've been really curious about these little units because of the remote functionality. You normally see PTZ cameras on live events and reality TV, so these would be a perfect implementation for the cooking show. It'd be great to add pan tilt functionality to the overhead cameras so we can actually follow talent around as they're cooking. The FR7 is really neat because it's one of the first interchangeable PTZ systems and is essentially a teeny little FX6, so it'll match no problem with the rest of our cameras. The main control surface uses a joystick to control pan and tilt, which honestly I didn't find smooth at all. I could read something like a set of inertial wheels, but I'd also need to find one that includes a separate RDX box for the FR7, and we would need two of them, so finding that might be a little bit tricky. Another option would be the preset camera positions, so we could theoretically program different positions for the camera shots as talent moves across the set. Everything connects to a network switch via Ethernet, so you can access the interface using something like a tablet or really any web browser, so the monitor feed is practically real time. I think there are a few other moving parts to figure out, like zoom control for something like a 7200, and if there's any way to smooth out the joystick control, but I'm really looking forward to spending more time with it. Nanlux, of course, announced their new 900C, which looks incredible, but I've actually been more interested in their dyno panels. I've seen Luke over from Meet the Gaffer rock these all the time, and they pack a tremendous punch while also being a really soft source, which would be the perfect key for some of our reality shows that we've been doing lately. The 1200 Dyno is as bright as a 360 sky panel in a slightly smaller form factor, and comes in this really skinny flight case that's like half the size of a sky panel. They've got a lot of great modifiers from DOP Choice, and from what I've been told, they primarily used a five foot octa to key Margot Robbie for the new Barbie movie, which was pretty cool. On some of our shows, we usually use softer panels overhead because we don't have the clearance for bigger modifiers. So that's where I'm interested in seeing how the bigger 1200 can improve both our softness and output. All right, so this one's a little bit of a niche item, but Innovative partnered with Make Your Cart Go on an integrated solution that powers your cart's wheels. It has a little throttle next to the handle and all you have to do is steer the thing. It charges in about six hours and has around 40 miles of range, which is pretty wild. Make Your Cart Go has solutions for other carts like Jaeger and Backstage, but the innovative version is completely integrated and it looks like it was designed specifically for the Apollo. There's also a surge protector at the bottom for pass through power, but it also charges the cart at the same time, which I thought was pretty cool. It would be nice to see some USB-C ports down there, but I'm not sure if this design is final. Again, this seems pretty niche and is something I don't necessarily need, but I imagine it would make light work of a fully loaded Apollo 52 going up the ramp into my van. So I've been looking for other slider solutions for my bigger jobs because I absolutely despise using Dana dollies. They're never as stable as I want them to be, and every time I watch playback, I just end up being disappointed. I found this new slider from Hudson Spider who make those really cool spider lights. And it's one of those compound sliders that extends as you move the camera across the track. And I was instantly blown away by the build quality. There's no sag once you reach the end of the range, which looks like it's defying gravity a little bit, especially once you compare it to a lot of other sliders that I've used. You're able to swivel the slider 360 degrees, which I found really interesting because you can extend the slider over something like a table or food without seeing the track itself. On each end, there are magnets on the same pole so that it starts pushing back once you start reaching the end of the track, so you don't just bonk the end of the track and ruin a take, which is something I've done plenty of times on the Dana Dolly. I've used other production sliders like the 8-Ball and Cinepad, but the Hudson's ability to extend and rotate make it super versatile. I really like the idea of using this for tabletop work since it'd be super easy to switch angles as well as height if we're on a dolly. All right, so I'm actually really pumped for this one because I use these lights a lot. IntelliTech revealed their new Mega Light Cloth 3.0, which improves all of my sticking points with the 2.0 mats. 
For starters, it uses an all new frame that uses buckles instead of the grommet ties that are way faster and more secure. The back also has a clamp similar to a Cardellini with a much longer baby pin that can also be released similar to a Mayfer. The older 2.0's mounting pin would always just become loose and end up tilting once it was sent all the way up in the air, which got super annoying. The larger mat is now 400 watts and now comes in RGB or bicolor, but the interesting part is that both models have the same output since the RGB pixel is shared, so most people are just opting for the full color option. The diffusion frame is also much deeper than it was on the 2.0, which should spread more evenly across the frame. There's an all new ballast design and the carrying case is now reinforced, which is great because my current cases have definitely seen better days. I got to check out Aperture's new Infinibars in person and they're actually pretty neat. They're probably the highest build quality of any tube style light that I've held and the amount of mounting options is pretty wild. I also really like the mounting clamp on the back that you can slide along the rail and position it in any number of ways without having to screw into a threaded hole or something. On the ends, there are built-in magnets and quarter 20 threads, and the battery lasts for two hours at max power. They have a whopping 96 pixels, which is pretty crazy considering a standard Titan tube only has 16, so the effects blend really well and appear super smooth. I'll admit, I was a little bit skeptical at first with the kind of flat bar design, but it seems really versatile after seeing it in person and just seeing how seamless they can stack with one another. They also had a mounting kit that included all kinds of trinkets to rig them, including this really neat spinning triple header to achieve this really easy process look without having to worry about cables. One thing that I was really impressed with is that the eight light kit actually comes with eight individual egg crates which is an insane value considering one honey crate for my Astera tubes costs 400 bucks. You can get an eight light kit for just over six grand and that includes the flat case and all the fixings. Alice was showing off their new Mercury lenses, which are their new large format anamorphics with a 1.5 squeeze. At first glance, they have an insane amount of character and are surprisingly small given their coverage. They have a really prominent barrel distortion, but I imagine part of that is because of the smaller lens design, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. The 72 seem to be the most normalized to my eye, and with a 1.5 squeeze, you're looking at about a 48mm field of view. The Mercury's feature a really beautiful golden amber flare, as opposed to the classic blue streak found on the Orions, and I actually find myself preferring the warmer version. Atlas actually let me and my buddy Julian Jerry take the new set to shoot a little creative piece with them, so if you're interested in seeing my first impressions, make sure you're subscribed. Spoiler alert, they're really nice. Julian and I actually both pre-ordered the new Mercury, so it was great being able to get some hands-on time with them. Hopefully this video is helpful in some way. There were a few runner-ups that I just generally thought were cool and might be useful for my own home studio like this massive 12 bay charger from FX Lion that's by voltage and automatically switches between 14 and 26 volt, depending on what you plug in. Prompter people also had this really nice lightweight teleprompter that attaches to existing 15 mil rails that I'd be interested in using for my YouTube videos. I've jerry-rigged my own over the years, but this solution is much less janky. Finally, Wooden Camera debuted a new FX3 cage, which in my opinion, preserves the lightweight form factor of the camera, which I really appreciate. Most of the time when you start adding cages and rigging to that camera, it just starts making it super heavy and bulky, which in my opinion sort of defeats the purpose of such a small camera. Overall, I had a great NAB and found a lot of solutions for some of my upcoming projects, as well as meeting some of you in person. It's always great meeting subscribers as well as other creators that I follow online. So if you stopped me to say hi at any point last week, thank you. If you have any questions about anything you saw here, leave them down in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.